Good morning. Uh, my name's Stuart Hamilton, American Peptide. Um, nice to see a number of people here, and thank you for uh, attending. Um, I'd like to go over the uh, large-scale GMP manufacturing of uh, peptide drugs uh, and how this uh, will affect peptide CMOs uh, in the future. I just want to go over uh, the outline of what I'll be going through, peptide markets, uh, manufacturing of peptides, the challenges, uh, our capabilities at uh, APC, um, our technology partner, Glytech, and a just a summary of, uh, of what's, what I've mentioned. Uh, the, um, the peptide market... As I was saying, no. We can all come back at 11.30 if that will help. Anyway, as I was saying, the, um, the peptide market is about 1.5% of the total worldwide pharma market. Uh, and that's split into uh, about 20% or just over 20% cancer, about 19% metabolic and the rest, um, GI, uh, respiratory, and a few other areas as well. But the, those are the, the top four main areas. The 1.5%, that 14.4 billion, is split uh, about 35% uh, gen uh, generic. Um, there's, uh, just know, and the rest uh, is uh, NCEs, and a lot of those products are going through clinical uh, trials. Now, we expect growth to be about 9.4% between 2012 2018, and that's certainly a lot faster growth than the global industry uh, that is expected. Um, the five top selling drugs uh, that are peptides are way over, or certainly over a billion, and the first two are uh, over two billion. Um, we see that this will continue uh, over the years, and uh, the there are certain areas, a number of areas, uh, where peptide drugs are being looked at, uh, a number of therapeutic areas. Um, but what we uh, do see is that uh, by phase three, 40% uh, of the, the ones that have been uh, looked at uh, are based on oncology. Uh, there's about, as I mentioned, about 500 uh, peptides in clinical trials. Uh, in 2012, there were six uh, peptide drugs approved uh, and four in 2013. Um, so we see that that will continue in over the, the next few years. Now, we also see the peptide demand because of that will increase. Um, we're looking at about 1,400 kilos a year of peptide APIs. Uh, about 40% of this is produced by CMOs. The rest by uh, biotech, pharma, manufacturers having in-house or um, outsourced to a, an in-house company, you can call it. But we actually see that, uh, we expect that the pharma and biotech companies will outsource uh, the generic peptides. We'll see a lot of uh, more generic peptides coming out of patent. Um, and so this production will come through to peptide CMOs. There are a number of challenges with uh, large-scale manufacturing. Uh, the scale-up, uh, the complexity, the quality, cost efficiency, and the infrastructure of the peptide CMO themselves. Uh, what I'd like to just go over is the sort of four areas of tackling the challenges 
um, and, and that we see in the peptide manufacturing business. Uh, we need to have an innovative approach, uh, in-house um, process development optimization, facility, uh, better equipment. And the fourth one, which is becoming more important, is collaboration and partnership with very technology-orientated companies. And I'll come to that a little bit later. We need a more innovative approach because of the problems that we are seeing with peptides, uh, long-chain peptides, uh, hydrophobic, highly basic, uh, and these certainly had, uh, highly hydrophobic peptides cause problems in purification. Uh, Multisulfide bonded uh, peptides, uh, we need to do uh, a lot of uh, research and development in synthesizing uh, multi-cysteine, multi-disulfide uh, bonds. Um, for instance, uh, relax, uh, relaxin is actually two sequences, uh, A and B, uh, and not only, only are they there two, but they are uh, bridged between, uh, using uh, disulfide bridges. So there's a, a lot of uh, areas that we need to keep working and keep researching. APC usually starts uh, with a small scale uh, synthesis, and we look at different approaches for synthesizing uh, peptide uh, before we start moving into synthesis optimization and then scale up, uh, which then moves on to analytical method development and process optimization before commercialization as, we, as the peptide works through the phase uh, clinical trials. Uh, and we do this uh, this way so that we can uh, have a, the, an optimized method of synthesis. But not only that, that the impurity profile is consistent all the way through from small scale through to large scale, uh, which is very important uh, for, through the FDA and making sure that the product uh, is approved. There's a number of areas that uh, APC has got uh, capabilities, uh, synthesis, solid phase, solution phase, uh, a mixture of the two, uh, ligation, um, a lot of different conjugation. Uh, we have a proven track record, and that's uh, pegylation, glycosylation now, and a, a number of other areas as well. Uh, purification, uh, we are continually, I'll come to this later, we're continually improving our uh, facility and investing uh, in purification and uh, lyophilization. We have a facility in Vista, which is just north of San Diego in California. Um, and uh, as I say, this is uh, improved since we set up the facility in 2002, uh, we continuously invest not only in, in equipment, but also in people, uh, and uh, working uh, to uh, the FDA 21 CFR Part 210 and 211, and also ICHQ7. Um, we manufacture a lot of NCEs uh, as a, a major part of our business, uh, active uh, pharmaceutical ingredients, the APIs, and a number of generic peptides as well. Uh, we use BOC, FMOC, CBZ uh, methodology for uh, solid phase and solution phase. Uh, the capacity of the solid phase reactor uh, is up to about 320 liters, and that would give about seven kilos of peptide. Um, depending on the, the length. Uh, Multi-kilo batch sizes, um, uh, and that depends on the, again, on the, the sequence. Uh, if the sequence is longer, then it'll be probably between three and four to five kilos per batch. We have a number of uh, synthesis suites um, and purification suites, uh, so that the product is started, the peptide is started in our purification suite, then cleaved, then moved into our uh, purification suites. So each of them is uh, separate uh, and it moves uh, endle uh, aimlessly, endlessly, it's just very smoothly uh, from one stage to the next.
we have uh, a, a number of independent purification suites, and um, as I mentioned, that uh, we have a range of uh, HPLC systems, um, quarter inch to 12 inch, and for those of us who are metric, it's about six millimeters through to 30 centimeters. We have a, a new, well, I'm saying new, it's about 12, 18 miles old now, 294 liter lyophilizer. And we can produce, process about five to 10 kilos, um, depending on the, the peptide length and the solubility of the peptide. And one recently, we were able to obtain 12 kilos in the batch. From there, it then goes on to one of the uh, packaging rooms. Uh, which is uh, under 10K. This is a typical large-scale manufacturing of peptides. Uh, we start off with the raw materials that are qualified, the equipment area, uh, and uh, area of uh, peptide synthesis uh, are cleaned and prepared. And then we start the synthesis. Uh, and it's a sequential addition of the amino acids, in process control, in process testing at each stage to make sure that we are manufacturing the correct peptide. And as we get through, uh, all the way through uh, lyophilization and then package, um, it, the material is then labeled, uh, issued by our QA, uh, and then the final QC and QA testing and review. Um, all of this uh, is, is done so that uh, we have the full batch records uh, and all the information is there for our clients to see. The fourth part that I was uh, talking about earlier is uh, the partnership. Um, we have a number of different uh, partners who have uh, their uh, own uh, individual um, innovations. Uh, one of them uh, is Glytek. Uh, uh, here, uh, uh, in, they're in Japan. Um, we've uh, established a, a, a working uh, partnership with them. They have a large-scale manufacturing uh, in Japan, um, and the human N-type and glycan libraries uh, are used uh, in the glycosylation uh, of the peptides. The material that they manufacture is very homogeneous. The glycosylation of a peptide uh, makes, can make that peptide uh, more important, uh, frequent, uh, less uh, frequent dosing. Um, the short life can be enhanced. Um, and uh, I think that, if I remember rightly, uh, glycosylated uh, somatostatin in the analog um, actually if I look on the, yeah, uh, increases uh, the multi-affinity of that somatostatin uh, to the uh, s uh, selective uh, receptors, whereas normal octreotide, uh, it's just the SS12, which is the, the main uh, receptor. But the glycosylated somatostatin uh, is, is a multi-affinity, so that it works much better. To attach the glycan to the peptide, um, we would do a normal solid phase peptide synthesis, uh, in, input a, uh, an asparagine, an amino acid, which has the glycan attached at the uh, side chain. We can look at solution phase, because then we can selective uh, attach the glycan to the peptide uh, by using um, substitution uh, with the uh, thiol group of a cysteine. Just to go over the, the summary, we expect, as mentioned earlier, that the industry uh, will continue to grow in the next few years uh, at a much faster rate than in the past, and certainly that's something that uh, I would say most peptide CMOs are hoping for. Um, we're looking to, we need, and uh, we are looking to improve the manufacturing process. We need to increase our productivity, uh, need to increase the, um, the facilities, um, 
not just, uh, as I said earlier, in equipment, but also uh, the facility itself, uh, the people, um, and the, um, the, the processes uh, that we have. Uh, if the process is not optimized, then uh, we're not going to be able to uh, increase our uh, quantities to hundreds of kilos. We are American peptide, APC, is, we're well positioned uh, for large-scale peptide manufacturing. Um, we've got over 27 years uh, pro uh, production experience, uh, manufacturing GMP peptides uh, for about 18 of those years. Um, we have, as I say, a, a, spe a specific facility in Southern California, and we have a, a non-GMP, which is our custom and catalog in Northern California in Sunnyvale. Um, so we know what we're doing. We've known what we've done before. We're moving forward, we're expanding, we're investing uh, to meet the challenges that I've mentioned uh, in this presentation. Um, if you think that uh, APC can help with your peptide, then please contact us. Uh, we're in Hall 6, T121. If you're looking for a glycosylated peptide, then give us a call. Uh, contact us. I'm based in the UK, but we have salespeople in the US as well. I'd just like to say thank you very much uh, for uh, staying with me. Thank you.